Hello, everyone. All right, we're doing Odyssey Notes number three. Okay, so this is um, right after the men leave Scylla and Charybdis. So here we go. Oh, here we go. After encountering the merciless sea monsters Scylla and Charybdis, Odysseus's crew reach Helios's island, the island of the sun. Now, you got to think back to when we read Land of the Dead. Remember that Odysseus went to the Land of the Dead to consult with the blind prophet Tiresias. And Tiresias told him, the very last page of our graphic novel, he said, do not touch Helios's cattle, okay? Um, because if you do, you're going to run into lots of hardship on the way home, and many of your men will not make it, if not all. Okay, so just going into that, they're in Helios's, they're at Helios's island right now. Just keep that in mind. So here we have Eurylochus. He is second in command to Odysseus. He insisted that the crew rest. We are, we're going way too hard trying to get home. So we just need a rest. And Odysseus was like, all right, but I need you guys to swear an oath that you will not eat or harm any of the cattle, okay? But they were trapped on the island for a month by this wind that would not let them sail away, okay? So eventually their stores ran out while they were there, and the, man, the men began to starve. So one day, Odysseus fell asleep, and this is when Eurylochus convinces the men to eat the cattle of the sun god. Okay, his reasoning was that it's better to die at sea from whatever the gods are going to show us from the wrath of the gods than to die right here where we can perfectly help ourselves to not be hungry. Okay, so it's better to die from the wrath of the gods than to die of hunger. So Odysseus wakes up. And he finds out that the men had broken their oaths and they had killed some of the cattle. Okay. So the sun god, Helios, is, I mean, rightfully so, very upset. He angrily asked Zeus and the other gods to punish Odysseus's crew for killing his cattle. And what does Zeus say? He says, yes, he complies. But he complies with a promise for when the men leave that island. So something will happen, not now, but when the men try to leave, he'll put his foot down, okay? So meanwhile, the men are continuing to feast for six more days before sailing away. And as soon as they went out to sea, Zeus sent down a storm that destroyed the ship and killed everyone aboard except, except for our dude, Odysseus, who hung on to some pieces of wood, okay? So it's at this point, um, he is now drifting at sea until he reaches Calypso's island. And this brings us all the way back to where we started with notes number one. Um, this is where Odysseus stops narrating slash telling his tale to the Phaeacians. Um, so part one is officially done. This marks the end of part one. Now everything is part two from here on out, which means... The flashback that Odysseus was giving us, um, like his long account of what has happened up until then, that 10-year span, that journey is over. So from here on out, it's going to be told by another narrator, an unnamed narrator, and it's happening in real time. Okay, so it's like presently happening. Okay, so the next day, um, that young Phaeacian... Um, Young Phaeacian noblemen conduct Odysseus home by ship, and he makes it there successfully. And then this is when the goddess blank appears. Who do you think that is? We have the goddess Athena. Okay, so she appears and informs him of the situation at home. And reflecting on our notes number one again, we know that suitors have taken residence in Odysseus's home because they think Odysseus has died after these 20 years. And they want to marry Odysseus's um, wife, Penelope. And they're also planning to kill Odysseus's son, Telemachus. Okay. Um, so here we have what is going to lead into our story, the challenge. So 
we have Athena is going to disguise Odysseus as a beggar. So no one will be able to recognize him. And this is when they reach Ithaca. She directs him to the hut of this guy named Eumaeus, who is Odysseus's old friend. Um, and he works on Odysseus's estate herding livestock. So they know each other. So he goes to Eumaeus's um, hut. And soon after that, Telemachus also arrives at the hut. So Athena reappears and she lifts that spell that she had on Odysseus, like to disguise him as the beggar. So this is like a cha life-changing moment here. So crying, Telemachus embraces his father for the first time in 20 years. Okay, both men weep together. Um, Telemachus tells Odysseus that there are many, many suitors and he is unsure. He doubts that they will be able to fight all of them and take all of them down because um, it's a large group. So Odysseus reassures Telemachus that although they are only two men, they will have the gods Zeus and Athena fighting by their sides. So here we have what, like 20, 30 suitors versus two guys and two gods. Like this is going to, it's going to be a showdown. So he instructs Telemachus to hide the house's weapons from the suitors. So they won't have access to any weapons um, except to save a pair of swords for themselves. So they'll be able to use their own weapons. Um, in the meantime, um, Eumaeus and Odysseus head toward town together with Odysseus disguised as a beggar again. So he, no one will know who he is as he's walking through town. Okay, now this part is sad. Outside the palace, they see Odysseus's old dog, Argus. Um, he has been neglected since Odysseus left. And he is now lying on manure and flies are biting him. And this, sad, this saddens Odysseus to a point where he is shedding a tear, okay? Um, yes, this dog is very old, but this is this part, okay? So Eumaeus tells Odysseus that Argus was once a proud and talented hunting dog and that it's only because the suitors have been in here mistreating him that he has come to such a sad state right now. So after having seen his master for the first time in 20 years, Argus closes his eyes and dies. He was just waiting for his daddy to come home. That's it. Okay, so that's Argus. Now, um, still in town, um, Penelope shows up and she spots the beggar. So after being spotted by Penelope, she calls for Eumaeus and asks Eumaeus to bring the beggar to her. So Penelope hopes the traveler might have heard some news of Odysseus while he's been on the road. Because um, who knows? Oh, it's the end of the school day. Okay. So the beggar arrives in front of Penelope and she starts questioning him, trying to get some information out of him. So he tells her that Odysseus is still alive and will be home soon. <laughs> um, with this news and pressure from the suitors, Penelope says that she will marry the man who can string Odysseus's bow and shoot an arrow through 12 axe handle sockets. Okay, so you might be thinking, what the heck? Like, what is that? But you might have actually seen this before. I'm going to show you this little clip. Um, this is a production company. Oh, let's see, where did I put you? Right here. This is a production company called um, uh, T TSG, I think. Um, yeah, let's let's just watch it. You have you might have seen it before, like at the beginning of a movie. Here we go. Cool stuff. So that was Odysseus. I'm going to play it one more time. I'm looking for these people in the back. Well, one person in the back, particularly.
There you go, Odysseus. And back there was Penelope. There he goes shooting that handle or shooting that bow through 12 axe handle sockets. Okay, so just to give you a little visual of what that might look like. Okay, so she says that she's going to marry the man who can string Odysseus's old bow and shoot that thing, shoot the bow, shoot the arrow <laughs> through 12 axe handle sockets. Okay, so all of the suitors attempt the challenge and some could not even string the bow while the rest of them could could not shoot the arrow through the 12 sockets because it's a challenging task. So still in disguise, Odysseus now asks for a turn and he gets it. Okay. So um, now it's about to be our next story is the challenge. Um, so Remember, it's not Odysseus narrating anymore. It is um, a random narrator, an unnamed narrator, who's just telling us what's happening. And every once in a while, we'll get we'll get some um, dialogue from Odysseus himself, some from Penelope as well, some from Telemachus. Okay. All right, that's that. Odyssey notes number three.